you want to say some words before? Oh, um, burn the ballot. <laughs> burn this sucker. Not vote. Burn this ballot. Burn your ballot and post it on Facebook so we can all watch it. Burn. Aloha, we need to keep Hawaiian lands in Hawaiian hands. We need to oppose the DOI rules because the DOI rules say that lands that are currently held by the federal government over 800,000 of acres of federal land and over 8 million acres of um, the rest of the Hawaiian archipelago is not under is not going to be included with this discussion so go out to protestnaialpuni.com and submit your testimony online and oppose the DOI rules Honia, dirty Dirty the waters. Go drink from the dirty waters. So what what is uh, Nayaopuni in a bigger context? So in the, uh, the the larger context, when federal recognition is sought by the American Indian tribes or other indigenous people in the United States, Alaska Native, generally the, uh, the, the process starts from the ground up, not from the top down. Normally, the state the governor of the state does not lead the process. Normally it's the community that comes together and seeks the federal recognition. Nanyao Puni and Kanayi Oluwalu started in the exact opposite direction. It started from the governor, it started from the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, state agencies, state agents, uh, employees there, and then came to the Department of the Interior uh, to lobby on behalf of Native Hawaiians. Uh, so, this is, is completely backwards of the standard process and calls into question the legitimacy and the, uh, the authenticity of this process. When the state is looking to do this, one has to start becoming suspicious of what the ulterior motives are. We don't know explicitly what they are, but we can you know, try to infer what they might be, such as land claim settlement, uh, you know, uh, sort of distinguishing you know, potential claims of, for independence. But again, it's not clear. But nevertheless, it is suspect that the governor uh, and the state legislature and the Office of Foreign Affairs are the funders of this process. A true process would start from the ground up. If the Office of Foreign Affairs wanted to really help this process, they would find ways to distribute those funds that they've been using to lobby Congress to federally, uh, to state recognized Native Hawaiians via uh, and get those funds to community groups to organize, to gather consensus amongst Native Hawaiians so that those thoughts and those ideas could come from an organic process from the community as opposed to trying to have delegates seek and create a constitution in 40 days out of thin air. There's nothing it's based on. Uh, constitutions have to come from the people. It has to embody the principles, the beliefs, the values of the community that will, it will govern. There's no way this process can do that. And that's that's the problem with my and, and, and what are some alternatives that, that you can, that you've seen? I mean, people have been living for thousands of years. I guess. <laughs> people have been yeah. living for thousands of years. And uh, for, for Native Hawaiians, we are in the process of educating ourselves. We have just learned in the last you know, 15, 20 years about the Pu'e petitions. We're just understanding the fact that there is no treaty of annexation. We are learning tremendous amounts about the Native Hawaiian uh, people ourselves, as well as the Hawaiian Kingdom. Uh, there's a whole uh, repository of archives of debates that went on when constitutions were being created here in Hawaii by Native Hawaiians 
in the native Hawaiian language. The thoughts, the ideas, the, uh, the, the debates that happen, we haven't even scratched that. We don't understand what happened. We don't understand in the Hawaiian language what the thoughts and, and uh, activities were. Neither do we understand the examples and experiences that happen across the United States and the indigenous communities, as well as the Pacific. So there's so much we don't understand. And, and the other argument would be that, well, we can't wait around forever. And that's absolutely true. Uh, we don't live forever. But the problem is creating something that's uh, faulty is worse than probably the status quo. And that's our problem is that creating something that's half-baked will not serve to solve the problems that we know exist in Hawaii for Native Hawaiians or anyone else. So if we can get at least some semblance of agreement on what we want to solve and what is our biggest problem, uh, at least we can work towards that in a rational manner as opposed to this haphazard uh, manner in which it's sort of being undertaken by the state of Hawaii currently. That is the main problem. So I think the solution is education and more discussion at the community level about all these sort of the, the entire spectrum of opportunities and possibilities. <laughs> you want to please call your dad. 